Hi, I'm Jason Breach from the Axminster Skills Centre. One of the things we do down here is a number of courses. One of my favourite courses is the box making course. Upon that we use some tools that are currently made by Henry Taylor Tools. So we have a round nose scraper, a square ended scraper and an oval skew. We're going to look at those a little bit more in depth so you understand what they do. As we said, one of my favourite courses, a little box making course, so lid and base, fits together nicely. We've already done a little bit of prep, so we prepared the blank ready to go into the chuck. So we're going to put that in. Tighten it up, so we're using a set of gripper jaws. Then the most important thing we now need to go over, the PPE bit. So we've got the goggles. Other thing you really need, get your dust mask out. So, put this on. So, we've loaded the blank, we're going to part this off using a 1-8 parting tool. So cut all the way through, go as far as you feel comfortable with. So we've separated now the lid and the base section on the box, the lid section being in the chuck. Could bring the tool rest up. You can use an oval skew and cut a V in the centre. So we use the long point to cut a small V. So the oval skew is about 12 inches long, slightly thicker section than normal, no handle because it actually drags the weight down so this makes it lighter. We have a flat on one side which will produce a little bit of a scraper edge on one edge. Need to set the depth gauge to the depth we require. Then with a spindle gauge, I'm going to drill a depth hole. So we line this up with the axis of the lathe, gently move my hand up and down, measure the depth. I find this quicker than using a drill bit. So we drill our depth, we want to hollow the inside. We also need an inset from where the outside profile is going to be. Draw our pencil line as a guide for where we're going to hollow out to. So quarter inch bowl gouge, work from the centre out, we've got the flute right over at nine o'clock. This is quicker to remove that material very fast. And we're after a half round shape, almost like an egg cut. Now we're doing the back cut, it won't give us a good finish, so we need to clean this up. So we're going to turn the gouge over, flute about two o'clock, work from the rim downwards. So we test the bevel angle, then drive the tip round. Still not too bad a finish. I want to refine this a little bit more so we're going to use a round nose scraper. This has a negative rate grind on the top. So we have a 45 degree bevel underneath and the hollow grind up around the top edge which fans out from the centre so it matches the profile of the tool. To sharpen diamond file we've got a hollow grinding on the top. We need to bridge across it. So you can see the shape. You can see the grinding lines coming out. So with our diamond pearl, we're going to work from the centre out. We just mark this up with a marker pen, colour it in. You'll see where we're sharpening, where we're bridging across that hollow. So with the diamond pearl, we're we'll going to bridge across that hollow gap. So in reality, we're just touching the very front edge to remove all the little grinding lines coming through. Got a small polished edge around the front now. Turn the tool over and we work up the bevel angle. So we always do that after we've done the top bit. The only time this tool goes near a grinder really is the fact of when the bevel becomes totally flat with the grinding or with the diamond pile and then we put a hollow grind back in on the bench grinder. By doing the diamond file sharpening will give you a micro burr bevel on the top. Nothing too aggressive, but it gives you a nice sharp edge. In use, the weird thing that you'd never do with a scraper is drop your handle. People often ask why this is easier to use than a normal scraper. I find it more controllable, so wouldn't suggest you try this at home, but if we drop our handle down, I'm still getting a lovely shaving. I'm gripping fingertips on the handle. Nothing too strong here, so in reality it's a lot more controllable. We can work from centre outwards, we get a nice shaving. Nice clean cut, 
nice and controllable is the major thing. We can work from the rim down, the middle bit, gently raise the handle up and down and then swing out. So we're really using this as a refinement tool more than a scraper. At this stage we would have sanded the work, we're going to go back to our oval skew. We have an asymmetric grind, so we have a rounded on the back, a hollow on the top. That provides more strength to the cutting tip. I'm going to use the skew now to cut the, the straight recess inside the lid. So this needs to be nice and parallel and dead straight. We can roll the bar of the skew on the tool rest a little bit which will allow us to use the side as well as the tip. So we've cut with the side edge, almost like a scraper, and the very cutting tip on the front, which will give us a clean finish. I want to round the corner off, so go back to the bowl gouge, gently roll this over, just to really create our profile shape a bit more, give us more access when we've done the lid, be fitted onto the base. The last place we need to clean up with is the little flat section and the bowl gouge cut. Now back to the skew, we can use this to do a shear scrape action. So with our beer on the top edge that we produced, will give us a nice fine cut. Now we're gonna bridge across the skew, top edge is the hollow ground, so we will really just polish the front edge, we turn it over and push the diamond file up that curve. So that's producing a nice fine bear on the top. This will allow us to do something most people would say you shouldn't do with a skew, which is shear scrape. We're going to angle it, we tilt the skew chisel to 45, nice fine shaving, really good finish. We're using the bottom third of the tool to do this. Clean up the flat section where the parting cut, just to give us a clean finish. Once we've done our lid, we would have sanded all of this, sealed it and polished it. We swap it for the base. Measure the inside of the lid recess. This allows us to set the dividers up. So we measure it, we half the measurement. With the skew, find the centre. Got a little V. With the dividers we've just set up into the centre, the left hand leg we swing out and angle downwards to create a mark to give us a guide. With the 3 8 beading tool, Cut a straight spigot to match our lid fit. So gently down, stopping just short of our line. Patiently remove the material so you get the lid to fit. Just starting to fit on, we turn the work over by hand, will give us a polished mark as a guide. Move a little bit more. Patience is the priority of this bit to make sure that we get this to fit. Needs to be nice and firm at this stage. Move some of the shape for the outer section of the box. This allows us more access to pull the lid on and off. So we're using the bowl gouge, using the side wing to remove the bolt. And from there we change to the tip, do a clean up cut, rest the bevel, swing the handle in towards your body to create the curve, gently coming down. We put the lid back on, check everything runs nice and true, everything needs judging and adjust how the fit is and where things come together. Remove a little bit more material so the lid and base join up nicely. So the step needs to be similar sort of size so where they come together everything looks good. So 
So I'm using the skew chisel, the point here, just to clean up the back corner of the recess to make sure it's nice and clean, to make sure everything fits cleanly together. The bowl gouge. Going to shape the outside of the lid. So light cuts here because we're held really with a bit of friction on that lid. Work on one curve to start with, so the handle's travelling back towards my body. Gently shaping the lid up to a point. Take the tourist round, cut down the leverage. So we're coming up to our point, we can see the end of the tailstock centre mark. It's dead in the profile. So the shape here we've taken most of the bolt. You can see in the join lines of where we change direction a little bit with the gouge. We want to refine it a little bit more here. The bowl gouge will take quite a heavy cut. I want to do something a little bit lighter just to bring those contours together. So we'll go back to that skew chisel. We can shear scrape by gently pulling this round, so we're holding the skew about a 45 degree angle. We've sharpened it with the micro burr on the top edge. So nice light cuts. You can see the shavings coming off here incredibly light. So this is our finished shaving, very light material. The profile of the lid's pretty much complete. Now we're going to do the inside of the base. So we create our V. This becomes our guideline again for the spindle gouge to drill our hole for the depth. So we set our depth gauge, test the depth. Back to the bowl gouge, quarter inch bowl gouge to remove the bulk. The drive on this is really the left hand pulling out from the centre, keeping everything parallel. So therefore the inside of this is going to be straighter. My right hand pushing down the handle quite firmly to give me a bit more strength on this. The further we go, the more leverage we need. So testing the thickness checking how parallel we are, where we've got anything, any lumps and bumps that we need to clean up. We change to the square ended scraper. So this has got a hollow grind on the top edge that comes out towards the left hand side. The front edge has got a hollow grind coming down to the front. There's a radius corner that stops it biting in the bottom corner of the box. The left hand side when you hold it isn't square, it tapers so it comes up towards that outside edge. So the best place we can sharpen that, lightly across the top to lose the grinding line, so across the hollow grind. Go so down along with the diamond file. Then the outside edge where it tapers, we can do all of that section down through, that will restore that sharp edge. That's the major place to sharpen that outside edge. Across the front, like the round nose scraper, we do the hollow grind on the front, then push up the bevel angle gently around that radius corner. Again the only time to go back to the grinder is when that becomes totally flat. So we can cut with this using the side as well as the tip. So it allows us to do the side of the box and the bottom in one tool. Makes it more controllable again with the hollow grind. So we're cutting with the side edge. Gently pushing down through. Handle on this we're keeping quite level. I can swing my handle out away from my body to create a curved side for the inside of the box. Up and down in the centre allows us to get the middle and then we swing outwards and pull my left hand towards the outside of the lathe to keep the flat section at the bottom of the box. The radius corner of the tool on this stops it biting when we meet the two contours. So. We have that radius corner of the outside edge giving us those two cutting profiles. Just feel what we've got, check things feel equal. A oh, little bit more down the side just to clean that up. Swing the handle out, get a bit of a curve on the inside profile now. Left arm is really important on this, controlling the tool, pushing it along the rest. The right hand, gripping a long way up the handle, that locks my wrist out to help strengthen the tool. This stage we've got our box, you would have sanded the inside, we can jam chuck the base, reverse it, 
We did something weird for this to cut it in half. Show you the profile, show you what we've got. So we have our lid, our nice curved shape, nice clean finish. This is straight off the tool, no sanding at all. So good profile, nice and clean. So a nice straight lip off that skew chisel. Being a narrower section on the skew chisel allows us to get right into the corner. On the base, that radius corner we can see nice clean sides, flat bottom across the base there. Again, quite tricky to do with certain tools, but it makes it so much simpler to be able to use one tool to do both tasks. The other thing with it being straight and not angled on the tip, you're in line with where you're cutting. So with the finished work we have a selection of different boxes. Much of what we've done for the video is end grain work, so we're looking at cutting the end grain fibres nice and cleanly. These tools will work just as well on cross grain, so the bigger boxes, the more extravagant pieces, using exactly the same tools. So the round nose scraper really gets in and helps do the profile, gives me a nice clean finish. So don't think about this just being for small boxes, they will do an assortment of different works.